Hi there. Welcome to Cook Local, Eat Local, the podcast where you can find inspiration, tips, and recipes for enjoying more local food and drink. I am David Crowley, your host. Now that we've done our last seasonal CSA pickup for the year, our attention now turns to eating local for the upcoming holidays. Today, we are talking with Mike Leahy and Tony Sudak from Walden Local Meat about Thanksgiving and the December holidays. Mike is Walden's Vice President of Brand and Marketing, and Tony is Apprentice Butcher at Walden's South End Butcher Shop. Be sure to check out the show notes for more about their background and resources on the company. But now, let's get to the conversation. Hi, Tony and Mike. Welcome to Cook Local, Eat Local. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having us. Very happy to be here. All right. Well, it's great to have you here. I have been a customer of Walden for um, about probably a year and a half, two years, and really enjoyed it. So it's great. This is a good chance for me to learn a little bit more about the company backstory. Uh, so speaking of that, Mike, I think you'd like to tell us just a little bit. Uh, you know, some listeners are probably familiar with Walden, but let's take it uh, from square one backstory and a little bit about the company for people that are not familiar. That would be a great place to start. Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, so Walden uh, started, I guess, almost 10 years ago now at this point, really very much so in late 2013. And the idea it started actually stemmed from a, a dinner party theme of uh, having guests at the party bring something that they either raised, grew, harvested, uh, and kind of cooked themselves and really told that sort of shared local dining experience story. And a couple of things or I guess small revelations for the attendees for that. And one of which was, wow, this is just kind of a fun challenge to take on from a culinary perspective and cook seasonally, cook locally. Um, but I think maybe even more impactful was, wow, this all these things actually taste better. Um, so that was really kind of the, the spark for Charlie, uh, our founder, uh, to find a way to build a business that could help connect uh, all the farmers in our region that were farming in ways that were supportive of the environment uh, and building topsoil and uh, properly caring for the animals that they were raising and help bring those to market, bring those to customers in markets in areas where, you know, there would be an appreciation for those. So that's really how we started in uh, late 2013. I think it was, you know, Charlie and a van and just going around making deliveries. And we've grown, uh, we're almost 30,000 member households now from kind of Southern Maine down the coast uh, into some parts of northern New Jersey. Um, so we've really been able to reach more folks and partner with more farmers along the way. Oh, great. And do the farmers you partner with kind of mirror that area or are they more concentrated up, up to, toward your original area? They do, yeah. They're all you know part of the Walden local. The local proposition is sourcing only from local farmers. So they're everywhere from you know parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, upstate New York, um, yeah, and a couple other additional sort of dis- distributed around the area, but uh, all across New England and New York is where we're sourcing everything. Great. Thanks, yeah. Mike. And Mike, how did you come to be with a team member at Walden and how long have you been there? Sure. I've been here just over a year now, um, and I originally was a, a member, sounds similar to you, um, you know, very much motivated by the proposition of, you know, knowing where my meat was coming from, what I'm cooking for my family and my kids. Um, And I had nowhere near to Tony's level of credential, but also had a, you know, sort of culinary background and certainly a culinary passion. Uh, So yeah, I started as a member and um, relocated to the Boston area from New York with my family. And as I started to look at some opportunities to, I was at Blue Apron prior, um, looking for some opportunities to make a career shift and a location shift, I learned more and more about Walden again, from a member first perspective, but then uh, learned that they were building out uh, sort of the marketing team. And I was very eager to learn more about it, got in touch, and uh, here we are. Great. Thanks. Yeah. And Tony might kind of teed up a little bit your culinary background. Maybe tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to be with Walden. That would be a great. Uh, yeah. I mean, I went to culinary school right out of, right out of high school. Um, culinary has always been like a, a really big passion of mine. Even since I was little, I started cook. I started cooking my grandfather when I was around three. And I always say I, yeah. I was predetermined to be a cook. Um, so I really chased that and I really wanted to learn everything like that. So that's predominantly where my background is all in the North shore, all North shore of Boston, 
in Boston for a little bit. I mean, I was a chef at the gallows before they closed. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's been a quite a culinary journey up, uh, up about and around to get to Walden. I mean, they opened f- just over four or five years ago now, the shop. And that's when I was aiming to get out, start a family and have more time at home. So, and I've always wanted to learn how to butcher whole, how to do whole animal butchery. So it was a great, like one door shuts, one door opens kind of situation that happened that Walden was, Walden needed somebody. I needed something I wanted to learn. So it was a great, great fit. Oh, that's great. And before you delve into some of the holiday topics, I always, especially as soon as you're the culinary guy, something delicious you've eaten lately just to get our, get our appetites going here a little bit. There's a new pizza place. Uh, it's called Sikara and it's, it's super, super fluffy pizza. Like really like it's not Neap- Neapolitan style. It's a little bit more middle Italy. I think some of the best pizza delicious. Check, it, check it out All if right. you're around. Cause they, they're open super late in the city too. So they, oh, they, they know what they're doing. Good. Great. So we are recording this uh, a little over a week from Thanksgiving, and this will go live It'll be less than a week to Thanksgiving. So we wanted to start by talking turkey, but we will cover some of the other holidays that will be right around the corner. So, um, you know, I know some people just go for, you know, that frozen butterball <laughs> turkey from from a grocery store for Thanksgiving. Uh, why don't you want to start to just hitting on some of the benefits of eating local turkey for this holiday? Yeah, I mean, especially from a from a butcher shop standpoint, like all the pasture raised stuff, it's it's just overall better for you. There's no like the GMOs, the antibiotics, even like down to the soil. Like Walden's taking good care of trying to make sure all that's kind of where it needs to be, and like it just tastes better. It cooks a little bit faster, so you got to be aware of that. But I mean, it stays juicy even if you do happen to overcook a little bit. As long as you don't turn the turkey into like sawdust, you should still be pretty good. <laughs> Um, the breasts are always tricky cause they cook the fastest, but I've noticed with, even with our chickens and stuff that if you overcook it a little bit, it's really not detrimental to the rest of the meal. So. Well, that's interesting. So you think that there's a little more, you, you get a little more leeway with the natural, more natural yeah. product. Yeah. A little bit more just because it's so it's eating what it's supposed to be eating. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's just overall better for the animal to be where an animal should be out on pasture doing animal type things. Yeah. And, and as a follow up to that, you're obviously culinary background. So, well, first of all, do, are you the, are you the guy that prepares the Thanksgiving turkey or do you get the day off from, from your <laughs> I don't, culinary endeavors? I don't get any holidays off. I'm, and I, I'm trying to take some days off, but I end up just inheriting everything. Like, Oh, you know how to do it. So just do it. Yeah. Okay. I'll just, I'll just <laughs> do the whole thing. It's fine. So what are some of your best tips for preparing turkey in general? And if any of the finer points, things you might do a little differently working with a bird from Walden as opposed to generic? Um, well, turkey tips in general, even with poultry too, I like to like make like an herb butter and put it under the, under the skin. It, it, mm-hmm. That helps keep the breast really moist too. And you get like these little pockets of like, when you take it out and let it rest, the pockets of like bubbling like butter and herbs and just really like imparting their flavor into the, into the meat. And you really want all that flavor to get all the way down to the bone, like the thickest part of the thigh. You really want all that to be crispy, nice and salty and flavorful. You like stuffing. It's a good way too, but I tend to go back and forth between doing stuffed bird and doing not stuffed bird. Um, Mm -hmm. You run the risk of it stuffing and not cooking it all the way and kind of you get that little bacteria action going on, which is you don't want to get everybody sick on Thanksgiving. So that's a good goal. (laughs) (laughs) Safety first. Great. Great. Those are some good tips. Now, uh, obviously down to the wire here, if somebody hasn't made plans for their turkey yet, and I haven't checked, I know obviously during the last couple of years, we've had a, a lot of issues with supply chains and stuff. I assume we're a little, uh, the turkey's left the barn as it were for, you know, ordering from Walden, I'm assuming, but like any of the farm, is it too late probably for it to first time to hit up any of the farms in your network or, or, you know, should they be planning ahead to the next holiday or are there some ideas for still sourcing a local bird at this stage of the game? You know, if somebody's listening to a weekend before Thanksgiving, for instance. Sure. Yeah. I think if it's, well, I guess, yes, it does depend when they're listening to this. If it's Friday before three, we could probably still sneak you in for a Sunday. Yeah. We could sneak you in for a Sunday delivery and, uh, 
um, yeah, we add extra extra delivery days, particularly around this holiday. And uh, I'm actually going to be packing turkeys on Saturday too. So if you get one get one Friday before three, I might actually be the one packing it too. Um, but in addition, I don't know, Tony, if you could speak to you know, assuming assuming you can't get it before Friday uh, Friday at three, or you've sort of missed the Walden window, uh, any guidance you might you might give a consumer? Yeah, I mean, if you miss the Walden window, um, I would definitely try to. Um, like scope out and see where the pasture raised stuff you can get like really is not just like the store bought, like the stuff that's stamped, like pasture raised. You don't really know. Um, we've been mm-hmm. giving a lot of people that come into the shop, the, um, a website, I think it's called eat oh, okay. you, you can go into it and kind of search exactly what you want. And it brings up lists of farms. Yeah. So if people oh, like cool. a lot of people have come in to us and been looking for like, raw milk and raw dairy more and more so now. Mm-hmm. And we've been pushing mm-hmm. them that way because we can't offer straight raw. So a lot of people uh, came right. back to us with the feedback that that's a really good website to be using. If you're looking for like mm-hmm. more certain stuff like that. Oh, that's great. Okay. That's definitely a good tip. Okay. So there's still, that's a good resource for somebody's motivated here. Here's this and gets inspired. They can, um, last minute type. There's still a chance. That's awesome. Now, before we delve into talking about some of the upcoming holidays after Thanksgiving, uh, this might be a good chance to pause. And, you know, we have listeners, some that are in the area, great, they can connect directly with Walden. But for folks that are listening from other parts of the country, is are there similar businesses in other places and any ways to find them you might suggest, or, or are they more likely need to sort of find them, you know, through a site like that, kind of more directly from the farms? Sure. Yeah, we have. Uh, yeah, and I can give just a little bit more background on Walden. I guess um, yeah. we're we have a pretty unique model in that we, you know, are are vertically integrated. So we partner directly with farmers in our regions. We purchase whole animals from them, uh, as opposed to you know primal cuts or you know, something that just makes actually makes the farmer's life a little bit more difficult. Um, but we purchase whole animals that they raise. We manage uh, our own processing facility. We manage our own distribution, so it is actually a Walden employee who's hand delivering your share every uh, every month, um, and we're you know taking your taking your cooler bag uh, from previous delivery. So it's just a it's just a very different model than you know purchasing something you know, a la carte, I guess, if you will, um, just from just from a website. So there aren't many others that are across the country or in other areas that have a, a model uh, similar to ours. I know that there are more that are trying to build it. But having that full kind of end-to-end partnership and really ownership is something we take a lot of pride in and we think gives us gives us more opportunity to create better experiences, you know, better for the farmers, better for the uh, people in the processing facility, and ultimately better for our members. Um, I know that there are a couple that are standing up in areas of the Midwest, um, but other than that, I, not that I can think of off the top of my head. Okay, great. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. So yeah, probably if people aren't in those areas looking at a website like that, I know a lot of farmers markets now sometimes will have a local farm that also carries meat, not just vegetables uh, in more winter markets. So unfortunately, if you're not in the Northeast, you might just have to do a little more legwork until Walden expands or, or, or replicates in some fashion. So great. Well, we know, uh, as, as you know, if you go to stores now, I feel like some, some many stores forget that Thanksgiving is between here and Christmas and, and, of course, other holidays coming up in December. I know it sounds like you have a lot of offerings coming up in December. So uh, if one or both of you wants to jump in and share what kind of special things might be available for folks that want to eat local meat and other stuff uh, for the holidays coming up after Thanksgiving. Sure. Yeah, and there's even some things that we're offering now as part of uh, November and part of Thanksgiving. Are you know we we have our uh, partnership with um, a farm in upstate New York that produces all of our cream top milk uh, is also making our eggnog, uh, which is a uh, a big hit and is available now. Uh, so that'll be certainly be part of our uh, December holidays. Um, but we're also doing a pretty uh, robust set of offerings for. Hanukkah, Christmas, you know, your sort of special occasion dinners and um, meals with friends and family. We're doing uh, everything from beef briskets, whole and half, to uh, rack of lamb, to leg of lamb, 
uh, hams, turkeys, and this year we're piloting something we're calling the the Feast of the Sustainable Seven. Uh, we have a pretty robust uh, seafood and um, yeah seafood program, and for those that want to um, give that tradition a try, uh, we're putting together a special set uh, special set of products that will be available, and that will actually launch uh, next week. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, I, I don't know how I don't know that tradition because we would observe Christmas Eve with my grandparents, my grandmother's Italian, but it must be she must have been from a part of Italy that didn't do that because we just had pasta. <laughs> but I've heard about that. I'm intrigued by that uh, tradition. So, uh, so that sounds good. Um, now, one question I had is now is that available if someone's listening and they're not currently a walden member can they access like those holiday specials or do you need to be a, a member to order um you really need to be a member yeah to have access to our full suite of uh both the the base shares that we offer as well as all of the monthly specials and um really unique products that we have to offer uh so i would you know obviously bias but i would advocate that you know for the best access to the, to the best that we have to offer it, being a member is really the best way to do it. Yeah. And is there, or do you have room for current, current, current members? I remember when I first signed up early, it was early in the pandemic. I, there was a, I had to wait yeah. a few months. That was quite a long wait list. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, we've, we've worked to, you know, certainly scale our operation and scale our farmer partners. So yes, we, we do have, uh, there's no wait list anymore, which we're, yeah, okay. which we're very happy to offer. Awesome. Okay, so if somebody can jump right in and get get in get in the queue in time to get a December delivery for the holidays and stuff. Yes. Okay, great. And did you say, Tony, when you were talking, you where in your base is is there some kind of storefront as well, or or just a place where you do all the processing and packaging? Yeah. So the Walden Butcher Shop is in the South End in Boston, um, three six N A Shamad Ave. In case anyone's looking for it. Um, but we process everything for the shop. We process right there. So for like Fridays, for example, we get everything delivered. So we're getting whole, well, quartered steers, half pigs, and once a month we're getting whole lambs in. So you'll probably mm-hmm. see me and or everybody else that works there, all three of us, well, four of us, for, um, bringing in the animals. And we're doing yep. the whole animals there. We're breaking them down, cutting for the case, cutting special orders, making homemade sausage, making ground beef and all that, you know, everything like that. And it's, yeah, we're a full tilt whole animal butcher. We get beer, wine, all, all beers, all local from almost the same area that we get the animals from. So we try to keep it pretty, pretty local. Oh, that sounds great. So, so it's, again, you don't need, that's a way somebody who's not a member could. Yeah. If you want to try thing. out some Walden meat and try out a hundred percent pasture raised beef to see how much different it is from, store-bought supermarket beef definitely pop in i mean we have the traditional obviously the ribeyes the strips the things everybody wants but Mm -hmm. to get more of that cut you need more of the whole animal so we have to figure out what to do with the whole thing and that's the fun part for us because we get to like maybe you wanted a brisket for hanukkah or something but we don't have any left because there's only so much and we can kind of turn you to try the beef navel little bit tougher oh, but okay. it's, it's similar to the brisket flavor wise mm-hmm. texture wise but it, it's a really nice cut just for example but i mean we're always there always giving people advice or tips or tricks or substitutions because like i said you, if somebody wants a hanger an 800 pound animal there's a pound of it on the hang, on the steer so <laughs> my goodness <Put laughs> you, know, you can only get so much yeah, and that's great because I mean I know a lot of folks. You know, someone else put it recently on one of, one of our shows. You know, people come to eating local food. I think for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes it's health, sometimes it's environment, sometimes it's taste. You mm-hmm. know, sometimes it's all those things. But certainly from a sustainability perspective, not only you know reducing those food miles is great with what y'all do, but you know that sounds like you're there's. I don't know if there's zero waste, but there's not a lot of waste going on. It sounds like the way you're carving up the animals. That's awesome. No, yeah. We're trying to reduce as much waste as we, as we can physically in the shop with the exception of the stuff we absolutely can't like do anything with at the end of the day. Like we're working mm-hmm. towards like making our own stocks and stuff like that. So we'll use the bones from the animals and we'll use all the fat to make like rendered tallow or 
be ground beef or what have you, but like we're, we're working towards being as sustainable as, as possible. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned, is there any other cut that you would encourage someone that's maybe a little off the beaten path that you'd encourage someone to try that? Um, that would... On the weekend specifically, cause that's when we have the most stuff. I always push people towards the Denver super, super mm-hmm. nice, really tender and flavorful. Sometimes yeah. you have to trade that off. If it's more, if it's more tender, arguably it's less flavorful. If it's tougher, it's going to be more flavorful because it, the animal works it more. Say like the the beef shank, the bony beef shank, also buco. You have to braise that for a long period of time, but once it's done, it's super flavorful. Mm. So yeah, that sounds good. Do, Mike, do you have any favorite cuts or or products from Walden that we haven't talked about? To, to sure. Listen? Yeah, there a couple come to mind. We have a pretty uh, amazing set of salamis that we use. You know, to mm. to Tony's point on just animal utilization, um, just coming off of pigs, there's a lot of opportunity to you know make things like charcuterie, uh, and our salami profile is excellent. I almost always have some in my house, um, and then the other is I'm a pretty avid uh, smoker, and we cut a pork brisket. Which is a brisket, nice. you know, same as you would find on a uh, on a steer, except pork. And I find they are absolutely phenomenal. Have this like beautiful blend of meat, fat, but not as fatty as a pork belly. But not oh, too, okay. like, it's just like this beautiful medium, and they're not they're not astronomically large, like a, a <laughs> beef, you know, beef brisket that takes a day wow. and a half to properly smoke. This you right. know you can get in uh, half a day, um, but they are. They are amazing. Oh, that sounds great. Yep. And as you, you alluded to either, so you have pork, meat, fish, any other products where, you know, it seems like you're trying to, you mentioned being vertical, but as far as the going horizontally in terms of the range of things people want to buy on a week to week basis, any, any, any other you mentioned dairy earlier, but. Yeah, we have some of our cream top milk is exceptional. Our members describe it as it just tastes like melted ice cream. Um, yeah, so that is pretty amazing. We have eggs. We have, uh, we're building out our grass fed cheese portfolio, 100% grass fed cheese, which is pretty unique. Uh, as I, I think I mentioned, our salami. And then, you know, back to, to Tony's point on being a whole animal program, our members have access to all the organ meat you could want or all the bones that you could want. Um, and there's really some exceptional products, uh, and exceptional sort of dishes you can make with things like that. And we're always happy to provide guidance on how to use them. Um, but again, we, we want to respect the animals as much as possible and, you know, make, make the most of everything they have to offer. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. Um, where it's a, it sounds like Weldon's been growing a lot in recent years. Because the, any new plans or, or things coming up or, or new, pr- whether it's, territory products or things things you want to mention before we close no i think the big focus is just kind of you know at some level going going deeper in the communities where we operate um, yeah. getting more embedded in you know the certainly in the member system, member program um, but finding the right sort of food banks to partner with for product contributions mm-hmm. educational uh, education systems that we can you know better support through better nutrition in schools uh, and again, just kind of going deeper in the communities we serve. There's not going to be a, there's not going to be a, a, a Walden local, uh, you know, San Francisco branch tomorrow. Um, so it really is about, you know, really embedding ourselves uh, in the communities where we operate today. And we still think there's a ton of potential there. That sounds great. Um, I realized one thing we didn't cover and maybe we could conclude with just um, speak to maybe just you know, for somebody who's hearing this thinking, oh, I might like to check this out. The range of options there are, I, I know from signing up there, you know, it's not just one size fits all. So maybe uh, give a sense of that, how, how the membership works and, and how people, if they're interested, should, what the next step would be to sign up. Sure. Yeah. So we worked it to, to try to offer a sort of product product set that would meet the most needs of the most people. Uh, so based on sort of what specific products you want, and then obviously how much of it you want in a given month. Uh, so the smallest that we offer is our just grind share, which will be, you know, our grass, our grass fed beef and pork and pastured pork. Um, and a five pound share of that starts at, you know, under $40 a month. So that's kind of your entry point. So we have just grind shares. We have basic shares where you're starting to get whole chickens and roasts, 
uh, and some of our uh, sausages as part of your sort of base share. Um, we have complete shares where you're starting to introduce some sort of whole muscle proteins, steaks, chicken breasts, those types of things, uh, all the way up into a custom share where you can be very specific about what things you like, what things you don't. Um, and then we sort of have our algorithm that is able to fulfill those things every month. And again, they're available from as small as five pounds per month. And some members are upwards of 30 pounds a month for, uh, uh, I guess, hungry households. Um, and then all access to all of our monthly specials as well. Right. And as Tony said earlier, checking out the shop, if you're, yes. uh, that'd be a good way to buy a few things and see what kind of, uh, what kind of setup you want to do as far as type of membership. Yeah. And they also do some pretty amazing uh, classes at the book sh uh, butcher shop as well. We do Jason, the head butcher, Jason does leads the uh, pork breakdown classes every second, third and fourth Thursday of the month, or sorry, we just switched it Monday of the month. So we'll, we'll have a, it's a, the, the shop is a smaller shop. So it's the, the space is very intimate when you have five or six people in there. Uh, but he, he'll break down the whole side of pork, go from the subprime, the whole thing, subprime was all the way down to like the individual cuts, where they come from. Um, and we'll offer like different ideas, how to cook it, what, you know, what to pair with it, kind of stuff like that. We'll have snacks. We'll have some salamis, like Mike was saying, we'll have some cheeses out. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty fun couple hours just to hang out. You get meat at the end if you sign up for that, that side of it. Um, but yeah, you learn, get a little little education, little laughs. So, right. so it sounds like sounds like some great options. You either jump right in, get onto the website, and sign up. And I would say, from my experience, it's pretty easy to use and tweak a little bit from time to time if you want to change what's in your in your share. But if you want to put your toe in the water, sounds like checking out Tony and his colleagues at the shop is would definitely be a good way to go. Well, great. I don't need, I appreciate both of you coming on and, and sharing more about how to eat more local meat and other good stuff with Walden. Yeah. Thanks Enjoy Thanksgiving, me. by the way. I forget where you started by Thanksgiving. I almost forgot. And uh, have a great Thanksgiving and, and do hope, ho hope you at least get some help, Tony, in the kitchen <laughs> on, on, on the day. Sounds like, sounds like it's an extension of, of your day to day work on Thanksgiving, but it's hard when you have a ringer in the kitchen. I, I figure, you know, it's hard to, probably hard to skirt that duty. Yeah, I got, I got the education. I might as well highlight it here and there, you know? Enjoy the holiday. Yeah, you too. Great. Thank you, David. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Cook Local, Eat Local. To get the show notes with links for recipes and resources we covered today, go to cooklocaleatlocal.com to get the podcast landing page. And please be sure to subscribe to Cook Local, Eat Local wherever you get your podcasts. Make it a great day with some tasty local food on your plate.